So patients with advanced head and neck cancer uh, have a relatively short survival time. Uh, and the median survival, even with multimodal chemotherapy, is about eight, 11 months. Uh, the treatment um, has um, side effects that are significant on patients, uh, including uh, physical side effects um, that also influence uh, their uh, emotional uh, well-being as well as psychosocial functioning and affects their overall quality of life. And those side effects in the acute phase of the treatment um, may include mucositis, uh, may include tiredness, uh, and other side effects, but in the long term also include uh, side effects such as uh, xerostomia or dry mouth, uh, difficulty swallowing, disfigurement, uh, which leads also to affecting the psychosocial well-being of, of patients and their social functioning. Uh, and so when we look at novel therapies for treating head and neck cancer, we take uh, these items into consideration. Uh, and I think uh, immune therapy, uh, as it is becoming a modality that uh, is thought to preserve quality of life for patients, uh, will have um, a future uh, role in affecting this item, which is a major issue for head and neck cancer patients. Patients with advanced head and neck cancer, whether it's locally advanced or recurrent disease, experience uh, a large disruption in their quality of life as well as their function, their ability to speak and breathe and swallow. Therefore, we need to balance the choice of therapeutic options with those that induce the least toxicity or side effects and permit uh, improvements in quality of life and function. I would add also that the survival after failing platinum-based therapy for head and neck patients is very short. Um, and treatments that would extend survival but also preserve quality of life for patients is going to be important in this particular group of patients. Um, because uh, not only they have a short survival, but their quality of life usually deteriorates fairly fast uh, once they fail first-line therapy. Cetuximab was FDA approved for head and neck cancer in 2006 for locally advanced disease and in 2011 for recurrent metastatic disease. This has been the only new FDA approved agent until 2016 when we had the new immunotherapeutic agents, the checkpoint inhibitors. So the field has been hungering for new agents to improve uh, survival, response rates, and to improve quality of life and function by providing new agents to target this challenging disease. When we think about patients with recurrent disease or recurrent metastatic disease, we really begin to uh, shift our goals of therapy to ones of palliation and quality of life. So we pay a lot more attention to what the symptoms are, uh, what the toxicities of therapies are, and realizing that unfortunately these patients are not in a curable situation and we really want to improve uh, quality of life uh, for as long as possible. So for patients with a recurrent disease, of course, the first thing we still ask is, can this patient be cured? For the majority of those patients, the answer is going to be no. There are some patients who can be salvaged with surgery or with re-irradiation, but they compromise only about 10 to 15% of that population. So for many patients, we're beginning to think about some sort of systemic therapy. And recently, we've seen that the immunotherapies, specifically anti-PD-1 antibodies, not only have efficacy in this setting, but they do so with a very favorable toxicity profile. 